had this one in about a year ago. It had um, I had deflection problem. It was a broken wire on the yoke, which I repaired again about a year ago. Video input, I didn't check it. Apparently, it's not working, so it's back for that. But I've noticed there's shipping damage. Let's check it out. Here I have a Sony Watchman. The complaint on this one is that the AV input is not working correctly. So let's uh, load some batteries into it and check it out. Okay, it looks like it's got more of a problem than... Hmm. Well, maybe this has sustained some shipping damage on the way here because uh, the complaint on it was the AV input wasn't working, but obviously it's got no horizontal deflection now. So let's just pop this one apart and see whether something's been knocked loose in shipping because it came from a long ways away. AV input is right here on this one but the AV input is the least of our concern because it has no deflection or I should say no horizontal deflection so we gotta figure that one out why I suspect that it's been it's probably got bounced when it was uh, in transit. Running the back of my screwdriver across the circuit board looking to see whether the deflection will come back. To localize where the problem might be. I think it's probably a, a connection or, or a fracture on the board has occurred. But the complaint on this is that the video input doesn't work, although we, as we can see it's got a, a sweep problem now, but I think we can see the reason why the video input is not working is because there's at the end of, a, of a, an input jack is broken off on the inside. So what's happened on this is at some point when someone's had a plug plugged in there, the tip we can show it on the larger version, but the tip has broken off and it's stuck inside. That's why the video input's not working. That's why also why when he tries to plug his video input in with the adapter cable, the plug won't go all the way in. It only goes in part way like that. And that's because there's a piece of the jack, this tip here has broken off inside. And that's going to be fun to try to get that out when that happens. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can push it through from the back, other times not. That's the least of the concern though on this one because it has no deflection. working on little things like this are just so so tedious sometimes you can get lucky and remove the jack and pop a little hole in the back of it and push the push the uh, piece that's jammed through do that by removing the jack just unsolder the, the four connections here we'll deal with that right now now that the board is out.
One thing you want to do when you're working with wick, especially when you've got small chip components around, is to keep your wick short so that you don't inadvertently pick up parts that you don't want to pick up because it will stick to the wick and you'll remove parts by accident if you're not careful. So I'll remove the solder from the the jack. I want to take a look at that part first. We'll get that part taken care of and then I'll deal with whatever else might be wrong with this. Hopefully it's nothing that's too serious. I got a shipping a shipping story to tell you. So, a few months back, I fixed an SLHF 1000 for a fella who delivered it by hand in a taxi. I might add. He's from back east, but he has a place has a place over on the island. So he took the ferry and brought me the unit to repair. And then picked it up when he took it home. He took it back home to Ontario where he, where he lives. But he has to say he has a place out here. So he's got a couple more beta machines he wanted to send to me. So he's wanting to ship it to my address. I said, don't ship it to my address. Don't send anything to my address because the drivers, they don't read the sign that says, don't leave anything at the front door. Take it to the back. They don't. They leave it at the front door. Stuff gets stolen. So I can't have anything sent here. It's got to be sent to my P.O. box. So he's doing some research, I guess he finds that shipping to the P.O. box is going to cost more. So he doesn't want to ship it to the P.O. box, he wants to ship it by a courier. He wants to ship it by, uh, I think it was, um, it was uh, Pure Leader, I believe he's using. Anyway, he contacts me and says, oh, I can have it shipped to the local Staples store. Because they are a, a Pure Leader and a UPS and... FedEx uh, delivery point. Okay, no problem. We'll ship it to the local staple store. So, packs his VCR up. It's an SLHF 750. I think there was two of them actually. But he packs up his VCR and he ships it. So I get notification that Pure Later has delivered. Okay, I got to go pick the thing up today. Go into the uh, local staple store and the local staple store knows nothing about it. They tell me that, well, we don't accept packages for delivery we just ship out we're not a delivery point um, we only uh, ship par parcels out but we don't accept them we accept them for DHL and we accept them for FedEx but pure later we don't accept packages so what I'm doing is I'm removing the back plug so that the the piece from the broken jack can be removed that's why it wasn't working and now I should be able to, if I can hopefully put this back piece back together and this unit, this jack will work. Okay, that goes in like that. Now, we can test this because I can measure the terminals and see that the switch and everything is working. Okay, I see where I messed up here. I was mistaking this for an AV input. It's a video in only, no audio. Okay, that makes more sense. So, so, so now when I test it, we've got, where are we here? We've got a continuity here, right, for video in. And when I plug in the input, it's the white one. Right, it disconnects the other input. We've got video across to here, and video to here. And when it's unplugged, we've got a video across to that one and not to this side. You see? So that's passing the tuner video through. There's no continuity over here. And when we plug in the input, it, it shorts these two together, which is what turns off the tuner and provides the video signal through. 
there is no audio signal that goes through on this one. And I was kind of confused. Like, what the heck? Why is it not working? And then I just happened to look at the, the cabinet here because there didn't seem to be enough connections, right? There's only, there's only, it's a special jack. There's only four. In fact, you don't even need, need to use a jack like this. You can just use a regular mono jack for that matter. It'll do exactly the same thing because this is not an AV input. It's just a video input. Kind of threw me for a second there because I was looking at this thing wondering, why is this not working? And then I realized this is just to use it as a monitor so you can plug a camera into it, not sound. It kills the sound from the tuner when you plug it in. So that should do the job. And I can confirm that using my, uh, I have a, I have one of these as well. Mine's a different, different, it's, mine's a, this is the Detroit Tigers. What's mine? I think mine was the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'll go grab mine and we'll plug mine in and I will confirm what I just, just discovered that it is video only. So here's my Pittsburgh Pirates Sony Watchman. We turn it on. Where is it? Why is it? Oh, there it is. Like my batteries are probably not making a good connection here. There we go. So when I plug in, I got a couple different cords here. If I have a regular stereo cord and I plug that in, it'll kill the sound. And if I plug my source into this, I can try I'll try AV inputs. So if I plug my power bar generator into it. I should see color bars or black and white bars. It's on the red plug on this one. If I plug sound into it from another source and there's no sound. Right? No sound. So this, this does not do sound. If I plug my color bar generator into a single mono type plug it's hard to see in here because of all the lights but as you can see we've got video just a mono plug nothing fancy needed and for that matter if I use this other adapter cable that was sent in with the unit we'll find that only one of them will actually do something it's, it's either going to be the white or the red in this case, it's the white. So the white should give me video on this adapter plug that was sent in. So it is, in fact, just an input. As confirmed with my working watchman that was donated to me a couple of years ago and it's part of my collection of small portables. Now you might wonder why on earth would they not have an AV input on something like this? Well, there's a reason for that. This little set was not ever designed to be used to watch your VCR or watch something on here other than TV that would have sound. If you were using it as a video monitor, it was used by usually by professionals that were installing security cameras so that they could plug into the camera out in the field, like when they were working and installing a camera in a store or something, right? They could take their little watchman with them plug it into the the video out from the camera and they could use it for framing and setting up the camera and that's what these were really used for uh, I think probably most of these other than the ones that were branded for specific teams that were sold through their ticket sales because this would be before the internet right back in the 80s uh, most of these here found their way into toolboxes of uh, CCTV installers for use as a portable TV for, for monitor and for uh, videographers that wanted a, a bigger screen than the little eyepiece that their cameras had of the day. So in those cases, you didn't need sound, you just wanted it as a video monitor, so that's all they provided was video in. So I'll reinstall the video in jack. I 
I think I see why it's not working, by the way. It looks like the circuit board on the bottom has snapped on the other side of the tube. I just noticed that. I'll show you guys. It looks like this thing got bounced when it was being shipped. And the uh, connection is let go on it. That's the, that's the problem with shipping anything is that uh, the uh, carriers just don't really give a get, don't give a damn about what they're what they're uh, shipping, and what they're carrying. They just throw things around, and if it gets broken, oh well, too bad. File a claim, get in line like everyone else. Because they don't really care, I don't think. If anything gets damaged, they just... See what I just spotted when I was looking underneath here was um, yeah, look at the circuit board. <laughs> look at this board down here under the tube. It uh, looks like the board has a major fracture on it. Yeah, great. So, I wonder if it's broken in the same place it was broken or a similar place it was broken before because I saw this unit about a year ago. It's a um, it's a bad design. It's a high stress point, and um, it's got the weight of the flyback transformer and everything. Although it looks like it's been pushed pretty good. Um, see, the complaint on it was when he was, when the fella that owns it said he was sending it back to me was that it. it the video input wasn't working but as we saw when I fired it up it had no horizontal deflection so something happened to it on the way back because it was working when he had it just they're just lucky that the tube didn't break although the tube is, is strapped in pretty good here with this clamp and I'm just removing right now this is the clamp that holds the pitcher tube in place I'll remove the clamp and then I can lift the tube out. So as you can see when it was shipped, bouncing it around in shipment has broken the board right here. It's actually broken it right in two. We'll try to repair this one more time and see whether it'll hold. Move the ribbon cable that goes to the CRT and you can see how severe the break is. It's like snapped right off and it's because it's right where it is. It's on the corner of the flyback. So obviously when this thing was shipped it got bounced and it stressed it. So we'll try to glue this thing back together and I'll put some epoxy on here and see if I can get it to glue and then we'll try running some more traces over top of here see whether we can reinforce this thing any stronger than it is already and see if I can just get it to work all right so I've glued the board back together now I just have to repair all the traces that are damaged maybe apply some flux and then we'll put some tin on here hopefully the heat won't damage the uh, epoxy so first things first a little bit of liquid flux prep the board and then some solder onto there and then then some wires over top that's probably the the best way to do it I think throw some light on there so I can see what I'm doing get the bigger goggles out
and now some individual bridge wires to bridge over the, the damaged traces. I don't know how much of that you guys saw because I obviously couldn't see the camera while I was working on this, but we'll just uh, check for continuity before I put the board back in. So, so obviously this one goes to here, and the next one over is this one here, and that goes to that. And the next one over is this one here, and that goes to that. Oh, why have I, oh, that's because they both go through the transformer. The next one over is this one, that one. The next one over is this one here, and the last one, this one here is that one as well. Uh, that one, that one, and this last one here goes to there, which it does. So. They're all going through, and since they all go through the transformer, we should have continuity between all the things. All of them. Now this one here is that winding there, which is not part of those other ones. And that one's there. So it looks like we have continuity. So that definitely goes through to this one. The other one here goes down to this. It does not go to those ones. So that's a separate winding. Okay, so let's uh, set this back in place. And Well, let's, first of all, let's just power it up like this and see if I get uh, any raster or anything. Let's see if I get a picture. If I get a picture, then, um, then I know that at least it's working while it's apart. And, I can only break it putting it back together. <laughs> okay, uh, power in. And the power lead is down here, so let's just make sure nothing is a touching. And uh, power it up and see if there's a, a raster. Oh, gee. Buh. Haven't connected the CRT. Duh. Got to put this back on. Yeah, that'll make, that'll make it work, right? Duh. Meanwhile, somebody's yelling at their screen. He hasn't connected the CRT. Yeah, duh. Okay, where's this go? This goes in. I forget how this goes in. Gee, it goes like this, I believe. It goes like that, that, and that. And these two go down over to here. Connects across the three terminals down here. So we'll just tack that in place. One at a time. Tack that one down to there to hold that in place. And tack that one to here to hold this one down. Yeah. I'll try that.
that one's onto that, I think, if I'm not mistaken. This one was over to here. And this one was down to that one. Okay, so I believe that's correct. Everything's connected. Batteries in place. Batteries not included. All right, power on. Will I get a raster? I have a raster. It's hard to see because I've got the lights on in here, but I have a raster. Let's plug the camera. Let's just plug that color bar generator into it and see whether I can pull any color bars with it sitting like this. Hey, look at that. We have color bars. Excellent. Now I can throw this thing together. Reassembling the Watchman, hopefully for the last time. Uh, these sets are, you know, if I, if I never see another one of these sets, it'll be too soon. These were a set that, even when I was in the business, we didn't want to work on something like this because you can't charge enough for the amount of time it takes to fix this thing. I've been on this thing for hours today. You know, and it came back. He said, "Well, the the AV input or the A the video input's not working. Not an AV input, just a video input. It's not working, and it's because someone snapped the jack off inside the thing. Now." Whether that worked before or not, I don't think I checked it when it was in because it was in for other damage, which was repaired. But uh, somehow it got damaged again, going back and forth. So I've now got it back together. No worse for wear. I'll pop the batteries in and verify it still works after it's back together. Watch it not work now that I got it back together. It was working when it was apart, though. But I do have a raster. I'll plug my color bars into it. Actually, I'll, I'll plug my video game into this thing because that's what the guy that owns it wants it for, is playing video games. So where's the contrast control on this thing? There is a contrast on here somewhere. There we go. Crank it up. Let's uh, see what Pac-Man or something looks like on this tiny little set. Pretty small. Anyway, that's it. This one's done. Thanks for watching.